Hello everybody, you're watching the Bean Bird 2 channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. And today I have a challenge question for you. Um, when we as a family watched the movie on YouTube called Sunday Morning Rapture, it's a free movie, it's on YouTube, I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But um, when we watched that movie as a family, I had to challenge myself with the question, if I got left behind in the rapture, what would I do? And immediately I started thinking in my mind, like, well, I would, I would go to the church. I would, I would pray. I would fast. I would seek the Lord. I would, um, I would try to, you know, maybe I would assemble some people together and create some sort of a Bible study. Um, as my mind was filling with all of these ideas, I thought we need to do these things now. And so I'm not saying that I think I'm going to get left behind in the rapture because I don't. But it's like just like a challenge question, like a motivating question, like to think, uh, to almost to instill a sense of urgency. Like if I was left behind in the rapture, what would I do? And whatever comes to your mind, like do it now. Do it now while we have time because we're operating in the age of grace and we are in the season. I know that there is a such thing as end times fatigue and people are kind of getting worn out with, you know, people said Jesus has been coming back for a long time and it hasn't happened yet and I'm just going to live my life and, you know, if it happens, great, but, but friends, we are in that season. There's so many signs in the constellations and also um, with Israel being at war in this, this time. Um, we are at the end, you know, the earth they estimate is about 6,000 years old. And it's true that the Bible says that all the days from Jesus on is the end times. And that does make sense when you think about it in a 6,000 year time frame. If Jesus came 2,000 years ago, then that is, you know, the end of time period of 6,000 years. So when you reached the year 3,000, you would be halfway. And then, um, you know, Jesus came and it was in the end. So that's why the time from Jesus until now is defined as the end times. But now we are in the end of the end times. And um, we also had seen this movie called Before the Wrath, where they talked about the symbolism of the Jewish engagement and the wedding and how they did things. And in that time, when a bride was um, engaged, they would make her dress by hand. And once the dress was made, she would sleep in the dress and always be in a state of being ready uh, for the groom because she didn't know when the groom was going to come. And they showed um, some pictures to kind of, you know, show the idea of like sleeping in a wedding dress and being ready for um, the groom. And we are in a time where we need to be in that state of readiness and waiting and doing what needs to be done. It's almost uh, as if figuratively Jesus is like, okay, five minutes, clean up, get everything you need done, like get out there and do it. Um, I feel like uh, when we take a long trip, like we went to um, Destin, which from our house is a 10 hour drive. And on the way home, it felt like the trip home went so much faster than the way out to Destin. And we kind of were talking about it as a family as like, wow, you know, it felt like it took forever to get to Destin, but the way home, it feels like no time at all. And so I was wondering about that and thinking like, why does it that it always feels like the trip home is so much faster? And I really think it's because once you reach that halfway point home, you start seeing landmarks that remind you of home. Maybe you're like, oh, I've seen that house before. I know that business. I've been down this road before. And things start looking familiar uh, when you get close to being home. And so that's why it feels like you're almost home for a longer time when you're driving back from a long place. And in that same sense, we are on our way home, right? We're on our way to a wedding feast and 
we need to be doing what God has us to do. And God is our father, but we can't forget that he is also king. And we are commanders in his army. Uh, it's a privilege that we get to be here doing the father's work and being a part of his business. And in the same sense that in, in our um, earthly life, when we're getting ready for a final exam in college or even high school where they have finals or maybe a college dissertation, when you get right to that point of almost graduating, you're fervently studying your books because you know like, hey, I gotta do my dissertation or I'm about to graduate, these are my final exams and you kind of put off things that are fun. Let's say somebody were to say, hey, do you wanna to go to this party? And be like, oh, I'd love to, but I got my final exams, I really need to study. And I really think that's where we're at right now in history is we need to be, you know, about our father's business. Uh, I really just think that I feel an urgency myself. Like I don't have time to go on vacation. I don't think that there is time for vacation for me. I feel like Jesus is coming soon. There's work for me to do and I need to be about doing it because Jesus is coming soon. And I'm not saying like you can't take a vacation. And of course, everybody, you need to live your, your life as an individual with, between you and God. But I'm saying what the Lord has put on my heart and the way that I feel. And I think that um, we just need to be ready. Um, and so I just urge everybody to look up and that Jesus is coming soon and be serious. And that um, also we're getting ready for a wedding, right? The Bible says that. And, you know, if you had somebody that you knew that was engaged and they had this kind of blase attitude and they were like, yeah, I'm getting married, you know, someday. And you're like, well, when? And they'd be like, I don't know. You know, if it happens, it happens. Um, if I was talking to that person, I'd be thinking, well, you don't sound like you're really excited about getting married at all. Are you really into this person? Um, and I'm not saying that to, to judge any, any of you guys. I'm just saying to like, um, think about these questions and think about like, am I excited for Jesus to come back? Am I in a state of readiness? Do I have my wedding dress on? Is there anything um, that I have loose ends that I need to tie up to um, get ready? And um, just kind of focus on those things. And I would just say, you know, if there's anything like praying, you know, intentionally, um, seeking God, talking to those relatives or friends or family that need to hear about Jesus, evangelism, um, you know, going to church, serving on your church team, um, just, you know, thinking about those kinds of things and being ready and knowing that the time is coming near when the rapture of the church will happen and we'll meet each other in heaven and what a wonderful day that that will be when we get to be together. And I feel like for me that I keep saying, you know, my rest is in heaven. My rest is Jesus. Um, right now I'm in work mode and uh, when I get to heaven, I'll enjoy the feast and, and that'll be my time off. Um, kind of a fun fact, my husband and I really like hot tubs. We don't have a hot tub, but for a while we were like, yeah, we're going to save up for a hot tub. And... Um, when push came to shove, we were like, maybe like, should we buy one? And, um, it was funny because my husband's like, I just really feel like the Lord is putting on my heart that this is not the season for us to get a hot tub. Like we need to be focusing on doing God's work. And, and that was just a personal story for us. And we didn't end up buying it. And actually recently my husband's like, I'm so glad we didn't buy that hot tub back then because, um, it, it was not the right choice for us. I'm not saying what you do, you know, if you want to get a hot tub, go for it. But like for us, that was not the right thing for us to do at that time. And he's like, I'm so glad we didn't do that. And so we keep saying, Hey, my hot tub's in heaven. Um, you know, Jesus is coming and our time in heaven will be here someday. But until then be a commander in the Lord's army. And, um, we look forward to meeting you in heaven. All right. Bye. <laughs>